Welcome back from New York. The history of modern journalism is tied to the history of technology. Think about it. The invention of the printing press allowed many more people to have access to information. The invention of radio allowed the public to actually hear the voices of public figures. The invention of television brought filmed images of war into people's living rooms for the first time. And now the internet is practically redefining what it means to be a reporter, at least for most of us. But one icon of American journalism worries that what's new isn't always what's best when it comes to getting the story. I sat down recently for a fascinating conversation with the literary giant Gay Talese. I think, first of all, the flaw in modern journalism is the reliance on technology too much. It's made the whole world of journalism, in my, well, my very prejudicial point of view, suspect. Because when you go to a newspaper now, everybody is behind the screen. And too much of their reporting is obtained through the communications. They can Google their way through the day almost, these people. And they're not getting outdoors enough. They're relying too much on that, the vantage point of the world that is the parameters of the laptop screen. Where for a long time it was, you depend on the telephone and shoe leather. When I first started off, Dan, uh, on the New York Times, one of the, the elders that were the great preachers of that form of journalism, the, pa the paper record, told me, young man, stay off the phone. The phone, in the 19, early 1950s, when I came out of college and got a job there, the phone was the new technology. And those old timers said, never use the phone. You have to go there. You have to be there. You have to see these people. You have to look at their face, study their expression, their gestures. It'll tell you more than just comes out of their mouth. You know, I believe there's truth in that to this day, and I have, I've, I've adhered to that. Stay away from the phone. To say nothing, stay away from the Internet. God, I don't, even, I don't even have a cell phone. I've never had a cell phone. I don't have a cell phone today. Why would I want a cell phone? Careful now. You're going to date yourself, you know. I have dated myself. <laughs> I'm an archaic figure from there. It's a wonder I'm walking. Some of you might be wondering why a man who doesn't own a cell phone and barely uses the Internet shouldn't be written off as a dinosaur. But Gay Talese's old-school methods have produced some of the seminal works of journalism in the past 50 years. Books like Thy Neighbor's Wife, his explicit chronicle of the sexual revolution in 1970s America, and revealing celebrity profiles written for Esquire magazine in the 1960s. His profile of Frank Sinatra has been called one of the best magazine articles of all time. Today, he still writes for The New Yorker. But Talese got his start as a tenacious young reporter for that most prestigious of journalistic enterprises, the New York Times. And when I joined the paper in the 1950s, my first job as a reporter was in 1956. And I learned from old timers whose way of doing things was, was lodged in a kind of logic that you have to get it right. And if it's not interesting to read, so what? It has to be the paper of record the paper of record. Anything that might be too well written was suspect. It might have been the imagination of the reporter. The reporter is supposed to have no imagination. It is not a work of the imagination. That's fiction. But Talese thought it was possible to be both a responsible reporter and a writer of literary merit, and ultimately crafted his own style, commonly called literary journalism. What is literary journalism? Literary journalism is what the New York Times did not advocate. It is where you try to make not only f factual reporting factual, you try to make it readable, and you try to bring to it some of the style of the storyteller. What I do, whether it's for a newspaper or a magazine or a book, is to try to tell a story. And I want to have scenes, dialogue, even interior monologue, which is reporting on what people think. Now, can you do this legitimately? Yes, you can. Does it take time? It takes an enormous amount of time. Patience, perseverance. I put in some of my books 10 years on one book. Or well, even a magazine piece takes me a long time. And I'm doing a magazine piece as I speak to you now for the New Yorker magazine on a baseball manager of the Yankees, Joe Girardi. I started researching that in the latter part of the summer. And I went to games. I, I, I follow my subject for a while without interviewing them. I like to hang out for a while, a phrase we both are familiar with, hanging out, the art of hanging out. And Talese has been hanging out with his current subject, Joe Girardi, ever since last summer. 
He's now spent nearly an entire year on this one single profile for The New Yorker. He's done extensive research on Girardi's parents. He's interviewed each of Girardi's brothers and sisters. Talese even managed to track down the now 69-year-old player who tossed Girardi his first baseball at age 10. For Talese, digging into the details of a subject's life is the only way to really get to know them. You're a stranger. They're a stranger. How do you bridge the gap and become a chronicler of their private lives? Well, you have to do that with patience. It's like a courtship. It's like you have a first date with a young lady. And the first date, you're very careful. You, you, you don't dance too close, and, you, and, you, and you, be, you mind your manners, as your mother would put it. Then you get to know a little better, a little better, that you can trust one another. Now, with this trust is tremendous responsibility. But if it's, if it's done well, if the, and if it's cultivated, the trust, you can get out of your relationship with people, their story, and told in such a way that the average reader would think you made it up because it's so intimately researched. It's so carefully crafted in terms of literary journalism. It is something that is literary, but it is based in reportage. It is factual. It's research. It's footwork, legwork, as we said in the old days of journalism. Talese was kind enough to read us a passage from the unpublished Girardi profile to illustrate his point. The year is 1974. The place is Bush Stadium in St. Louis, and the Cardinals are playing an afternoon game in midsummer against the Montreal Expos. And seated next to his aunt in the front row, about 25 feet down from the left field foul pole, is an exuberant, nearly 10-year-old fan who, after every half inning, rises to his feet and pleads noisily with the players, exchanging warm-up tosses in the outfield to throw a ball in his direction. So this is the way, you know, it's, a, it's all research, but it's the beginning of a scene. So I come down in the morning, and I hide out here. This is under the house. It used to be a wine cellar. About 100 years ago, it was a wine cellar. Talese gave me a tour of his private office, a bunker secluded underneath his New York City townhouse. Immediately, your eye is drawn to the stacks of colorful boxes that fill the workspace. There's a file of notes. This is just, all this stuff is filled with paper. Look at all this stuff. Just notes and notes Bobbit and notes. Trial, Bobbit trial. Bobbit trial. Right. Famous Bobbit trial back in 1993. I was doing that for the New Yorker. It didn't work out very well, but I was working on it. A book uh, about the mafia called Honor Thy Father. Right. All the notes there. Thy neighbor's wife notes here. On, unto the sons. Okay. Now, who here? organizes this for you? I do. I, don't, I organize it and all this, this, this montaging, this, this right. little handiwork, this whatever you call it. I, I, I'm a, I try to be visual in the way I work. And I like having pictures of the people I'm writing about. All of Talese's notes about Joe Girardi, his current subject for The New Yorker, will eventually end up stored in decoupage boxes just like these. But it's important to understand that this isn't just a decorative technique. This is a crucial part of Talese's writing process, thinking visually. All of his Girardi research folders are also covered with pictures, headlines, and clippings. Since I write visually or try to, sometimes all this picture pasting, it gets you into the, into the mood, almost like a film director, I imagine, v visualizing scenes before it's part of a script. It's all trying to organize. It's all, where do you, how do you begin? Where do you go? Who's playing? Who's, how do you move from here to there? And who's moving? All these things. <laughs> 